So if you've watched any of my gift guide videos, you'll know that there are two products I really love and I recommend to a lot of different people. One of those would be an NVMe exclosure. They're extremely handy. They can expand storage of anything you attach it to. They're great for backups. They're great for just using as a portable drive with a higher capacity and a good speed. Um, and then I also recommend USB hubs, especially with the way that laptops are nowadays. They have much fewer ports um, and they're really, really leaning heavily on USB-C to kind of expand that out and having a hub for the most part is pretty necessary nowadays. So Yoda Masters sent me a product that combines those two things together and this is their 10-in-1 USB hub that also has an M.2 slot for an NVMe or SATA SSD and it is a full enclosure. It's a really, really cool looking product. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the awesome features it has. Now, one big thing with this 10-in-1 USB hub is that it really simplifies and cleans up your space or your bag, right? Combining two really helpful products together into one package makes you know your desktop a little bit simpler, a little bit cleaner, or you don't have to pack as many things in your bag when you travel. Combining that external enclosure and USB-C hub functionality together is absolutely incredible. And hopefully you get some really good performance out of it compared to having those two separate products. Now, like I've talked about before, USB-C becoming such a large driving force in the tech space is amazing because you can use things like this, not only with laptops, but you can use it with the handheld gaming devices like the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck. You can use it with your phone and you can use it with really anything that can interface via USB-C with other storage devices or USB devices as a whole. And again, with it being a hub with an M.2 slot in it, you're not only expanding your whole connectivity with all the extra ports that you have on it, but you're also expanding your storage as well or having a built-in backup that you could use, which is really, really cool. And we'll talk about how that's super useful and how that could be used in the future. It's entirely toolless, so you don't have to carry around a screwdriver or anything to change the drive that's in it, which is also very nice. Another nice thing about this hub compared to a standard external enclosure is that it has quite a bit more going forward in terms of cooling. It has a copper pipe heat sink, aluminum construction, and I actually have the upgraded version here, which has a built-in fan as well. And Yoda Master made all of this much simpler to carry around with a travel case. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. And there we go, we got our little case that I assume almost everything is inside. Yep, we got our manual and that's basically all that's in the box. All right, so I got another light on to make this a little bit easier. So here we are, we got the case. Nothing special, but it's a semi-hard case, um, soft shell, but it's, uh, you know, it's got some protection to it, which is nice. Um, you got Yoda Master storage bag on it. Get this thing opened up. And we have our hub. So let's take that out. And we'll go over that one in a second. We have a nice uh, USB-C to USB-C cable. See how long it is. It's nice that they include it. So that's maybe about a one and a half foot, one foot, I don't know, feet very well, but not bad, this is just a really good uh, connecting cable. And then we have what I assume, are, yep, all of the uh, heat sinks, uh, the pads, and the little toolless tools for mounting your M.2 drive. And the bag itself is actually really nice. You have a little elastic here to hold the hub in place so it's not bouncing around all over the place. You have a little flap here, double-sided. Um, you can use this to store SD cards or uh, USB sticks or kind of anything in there. And then you have another larger one here. Uh, you can put some larger cables, an HDMI cable or something in there. Um, so pretty nice. Let's go ahead and look at the hub. And it's nice. It's got a mix of plastic and aluminum. Now that we've got this thing open, let's go ahead and talk about the ports. So the first one here is the... Uh, power delivery 100 watt USB-C port. Them having this is really, really nice. It means that if you have any device that requires up to 100 watts, it will be able to pow be powered through this no problem. That covers most small form factor laptops, ultralights, and even work laptops as well. It covers all of the handheld gaming devices like the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck. 
more than enough for basically any phone. You can even do, use this with a Nintendo Switch and charge it as well. It having the power delivery certification is great and it's an awesome port to have. So you would use this as your input from your uh, charger or any kind of power adapter that uses USB-C, you would use that here. And then you would use this next port as your port from the device to your computer. And that's where the cable that they provide you is a good spot to use. So next up is one of the five gigabit per second USB-A ports right here. We have an HDMI 2.0 port here, and then we have an RJ45 jack that supports uh, gigabit per second. Now going over to the other side, we have another USB-C port rated for 10 gigabit per second. We have a USB-A port also rated for 10 gigabit per second. We have a second USB-A port for five gigabit per second. We have an SD and micro SD card reader, which is really, really nice to see. On the side here, we have an exhaust for the fan. And on this side, there is absolutely nothing. And then we have inside. So we can open that up and we have our slot and port for the M.2 drive in there. And on the bottom, we just have some uh, air vents here to allow for some circulation. And as you saw, that was super easy to do. Um, the magnetic top makes things very convenient. It comes on and off very easily. The magnets aren't the strongest, but I mean, they do a pretty good job. We'll see how well this does over time. And the nubs make it very easy to line up. I'm not even actually looking at the device. I'm looking at the screen while I'm doing this. Very easy to line up. And again, we have that M.2 slot inside and it supports multiple sizes, 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. Um, and it's both NVMe and SATA compatible, which is also very nice. So why don't we go ahead and get an NVMe drive installed in here. The nice thing is there are instructions right on the lid for how to install the NVMe drive. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get that one done. I have my TimeTech uh, NVMe that we'll be using today for this. So let's go ahead and use that. And we've got our uh, heat sink here, which is a sandwich design, I believe. And they actually give you multiple of the locking mechanisms, the toolless locking mechanisms. So in case you lose one, you got some extras, which is nice. Let's go ahead and put those over there. And I believe this is the top. And then we have the bottom here and we have some stuff we have some of the pads in the middle, so let's go ahead and open that up there. So the copper pipe is in here. Uh, I don't know how much that actually improves the heat transfer because usually a hopper, copper pipes are meant to bring something laterally or you know across the length of the pipe to the other end. Not as much, you know, just being there and having the fins on this other side, but. I assume it helps a little bit at least. I'm not a thermal engineer or anything like that. So we'll see how it works. They give us an extra couple thermal pads. We got quite a few here, I think. Yep. So the pads that they give you are all a different thickness. Um, so I don't think we're gonna need to use the thickest ones because the Time Tech does have some chips on the back and we're gonna wanna make sure that this fits properly in the sandwich. So we're gonna go ahead and get this going. All right, so we've got that in there and we have the heat spreader centered over our NVMe drive. It doesn't cover the whole thing as you can see, um, but we have it centered over most of the chips and it does a pretty good job. I like this design. I like how the bottom is not clipping onto the actual drive itself, but it's clipping onto the top heat sink, um, which is very, very nice to see. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab one of those toolless clips. We're gonna slide it onto our drive and we're gonna make sure um, that we have it as horizontal as possible because we want to line up with the slots inside the bay here. So we have it nice and horizontal. We're gonna go ahead and install this like you would any NVMe uh, or M.2 drive. We're gonna do it at a 30 degree angle. Slide that in until it clips. You're gonna hear it. Then we're gonna push this thing down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees it may not be very easy for me to do with the camera we 
gonna keep on blocking it while I'm doing it, but there we go. As you can see, we got about 90 degrees. It's holding that in very, very well. And then you grab your cover here, slap it back on top and you're all good to go. All right, so I have my laptop here. This one charges and uses data through USB-C, so that's very, very handy. So we're gonna go ahead, grab our hub. We're gonna put the uh, USB-C cable that comes with it into the PC in. We're gonna plug that into our computer. And our drive has appeared and everything's on there, which is pretty, pretty sweet. And this is with no additional power to the hub. The hub is just being powered off of the USB-C port. So I wanna go ahead and try a few other scenarios um, that are realistic and things that I would probably use it as. So for example, I wanna go ahead and move some data off of one of my SD cards and put it onto the NVMe drive. So we're gonna go ahead and grab one. Let's grab this one. We'll go ahead and slot that into the SD card slot. And there we go, we have our other drive and it is working as well. So let's go ahead and see if I have any files on here. So I got some pictures. So we're gonna go ahead and grab some of these. We're gonna copy them. We're gonna go back, go here. This is one from one of the copy windows videos that I did. We'll just say test 44. And we're able to transfer and it is speedy fast really really quick so a final scenario is on a laptop that maybe doesn't have any usb a ports and we want to go ahead and use our mouse on it while doing all this work so we're going to go ahead and add that on here so we have our nvme drive we have an sd card and we're going to use our usb mouse and we got it all working. And this is without any additional power. Now keep in mind that they do suggest using at a minimum 60 watts when using multiple ports, the internal drive, and something like the HDMI port that is outputting to another display. So for example here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my 100 watt charger from Ugreen. And we have my nice USB-C cable from Silkland here. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that in there and we're gonna plug that into the power delivery port. And our laptop is charging and it's not giving any errors or anything like that. I believe this, this laptop charges 60 watts and 90 watts. So that is pretty sweet. It is uh, charging pretty well. Um, it's not gonna give me the time that it's gonna take to charge or anything like that, but it's doing a pretty good job. And again, we can, we still have a bunch of extra ports here, but this is probably my most likely scenario of use, um, transferring SD um, data off of it onto the NVMe drive inside and a few other situations. So as I mentioned earlier, the fact that so many things are using USB-C and it's becoming such a great standard right now means that you can really expand its functionality. So for example, here, this is actually my phone. Um, Samsung has something called Dex where it is a desktop that is powered off of your phone and I can use my phone as a portable laptop by connecting the HDMI out from the device here um, into a monitor or display. Now I have access to the NVMe drive, I have access to the SD card, I'm able to use my mouse, I can use a keyboard if I want to. This really adds a lot of added functionality, which is incredible for this. It's also great if you have something like an iPad, you can use it in a very similar fashion as well. And with Macs in general, this is a really, really good setup. It'll really help expand the functionality since their overall USB ports are at a minimum because they try to keep them nice and slim but this is really great for that. And it's also great for the Steam Deck. So as you can see here, I have my Steam Deck plugged in now and I'm able to use all functions of my Steam Deck as I normally would with say a uh, actual dock that is dedicated to the Steam Deck. But I have that extra storage that's available to me. I have a bunch of stuff. I can connect it now directly through the ethernet um, so that I don't have to rely on Wi-Fi. If I go ahead and switch over to the desktop mode, now I can basically use my Steam Deck as a portable computer, which is really, really cool. You can use it with the internet, you can use it with a keyboard, you can do a whole bunch of things with it. This is some awesome added functionality and the fact that you can do that all 
with the Yoda Master Hub is fantastic. It's charging everything. I don't have to worry about my battery draining. Um, getting all of this really sweet added functionality is a awesome, awesome benefit of a device like this. And again, just like with the phone and with your laptop, you can use that expanded storage to do so much more. So here we have our uh, SD card and here is the NVMe drive that I have in there. So if I go ahead and mount and open this one up, we can see that we have my NVMe drive. We have those files that I moved over. Um, it's such a nice thing to have. It's so beneficial. If you go ahead and open up this, we'll have access to the SD card that we saw on the laptop earlier. So having all of this extra storage space is really nice. And like I mentioned, you know, it can be really great to expand the storage of your Steam Deck for things that maybe you don't want to store on the Steam Deck because you'll never play them on the go. But if you're planning on playing them on your TV, you have this thing hooked up with the HDMI cord into your TV. You have your games that you use on your TV on here, and then you're all set and ready to go. Now, with all that said, how am I going to be using this? Well, first of all, this is going to be a great replacement to my already existing USB-C hub that I bring in my laptop bag. I use this for both my work and personal laptop. Um, it's got three USB-A's on it. It's got HDMI. It's got VGA that I have almost never used on this one. Uh, it's got an RJ45. It's got the SD card slots. It's got a USB-C for power delivery on the back. Um, I can replace this whole thing with this. It is a different form factor, but in terms of length, it's about the same. It has, uh, you know, detachable cables. So this is actually a little bit easier to bring around and I can just leave this one at home now, which is great. I can use this to replace the little hub that I use with my computer, which is actually this one right here. I use this to have my mouse plugged into, as you can see right now, I also use it with the SD card slots to offload everything off my camera uh, when I do these recordings and then go ahead and do my editing. So that's pretty awesome that I can replace this with this as well. And the fact that all that can be done without it being powered is super beneficial. Another thing I'm gonna try using it a little bit more, I've done a little bit with it, but I'm gonna use it more with my Steam Deck. It's nice that I can use the expanded storage on here um, with the two terabyte drive that I've got in there. I've got tons of space for all of the stuff that I talked about in terms of my video editing, but I can also stick a couple of games on there. And when I have this thing plugged into a TV, for example, use the 4K60 output of the HDMI 2.0, plug that into my TV, and have the expanded storage to throw a couple extra games that are maybe more TV focused ones that I don't need to actually carry on the device because I wouldn't play them otherwise. But on the TV, they'd be perfect. Go ahead, put them onto the NVMe drive on here. And then we've got a great little setup as well. So that'll be awesome. And the fact that it'll charge this while it's working, same thing with the laptop, really, really nice to have. But overall, I think one of the best situations um, that people will really find something like this incredible for um, and that I'm going to be using it the most for is as a creator, photographer, cinematographer, all that kind of stuff. Being able to have the expanded storage of the NVMe drive and being able to quickly offload data from an SD card, a micro SD card off of any of those kind of platforms onto the NVMe drive is super beneficial being able to do that without having to have any external power or anything like that. You can just plug this into your laptop, plug your SD card in here, have your NVMe drive already in there, offload everything, and then you always have a nice safe backup for everything you're recording, especially if you're doing maybe a long trip or something. That is absolutely awesome. Having that expanded uh, connectivity is really, really great as well. And all of this in a really decently sized package. It's not overly large, which is also really nice. And you can kind of stick it all in this little travel case, which doesn't increase the size all that much either, uh, which is also really nice and beneficial. And you can throw your extra cables in here and you can use this to store some of your other stuff, like maybe your earbuds, uh, a few extra cables, your extra SD cards, all of that kind of stuff. You can just throw it all in here and be ready to go. So a few days later, Dimitri, I thought I would show you how I have the storage bag actually packed right now uh, after pulling it out of my laptop bag. This is the way I've been using it for the last uh, couple days or so. And if we go ahead and open this up, so we have the hub here. Um, it still has that two terabyte TimeTech NVMe inside. We have the short uh, USB-C to USB-C cable that came with it. I have one of my SD cards here as a backup. And then I have the Silkland um, 
USB-C cable here, and then I have an HDMI cable here, and it all fits together relatively well. It's a little tight, um, but it works really, really well, and uh, this is the way that I have been storing everything so far. Now to talk about all the things that I like about it and the things I don't like about it. So the things I really do like about it, the form factor is great. Uh, considering that you have an NVMe drive, you have a built-in fan, you have all this expansion ports here for usability for all kinds of things. It's a really good form factor for that. Um, having the built-in fan and all that is great. Having all of that be able to fit in this bag and having to be able to put extra things in this bag is really nice as well. I do like the fact that you can use it unpowered and we were able to test it using the NVMe drive, the SD card, and a USB port, all while being unpowered, which is also great. Again, Yoda Master does suggest that when you connect multiple high power devices, like hard drives, the NVMe, uh, an external monitor, or you're using it with a desktop computer, that you should have it powered with at least 60 watts of power. So do keep that one in mind. But from what we were able to do today, it worked really, really well. I don't think it would work nearly as well if we were doing the NVMe drive, an SD card, um, this USB spot, and then maybe a uh, external hard drive or something like that in here. I think that's where it would struggle without power, um, or additional power, and you should probably end up using the uh, power delivery port uh, to at least put 60 watts in there. But other than that, it's fantastic the fact that you can use so much of it without any power and i really do like how it's entirely toolless i like how easy it is to get to the m.2 drive and again this isn't something where i feel like i would need to be replacing this m.2 drive a lot so i mean one of the big downsides one of my first downsides of this is that this little toolless tool is not the easiest to use it's not great um, it's relatively easy to get in but trying to get it back out is not very easy um, but again, you shouldn't be needing to do that very often anyway, so it's not a huge gripe for me. And honestly, that's probably one of the only major downsides. Um, I would love for this uh, RJ45 port to have been uh, a two and a half gig or uh, even higher than that. Two and a half gig would have been really nice on here, um, but I can see why it may not have been feasible, especially at the price point that it is. It also would have been nice if the USB-A ports were all 10 gig instead of the two 5 gig ones. But again, that was probably to keep costs down, so I'm not overly upset about that either. Um, not the end of the world. It just would have been a nice little added benefit. And other than that, I mean, this thing has basically everything I would want on it. Um, and it does a very good job. Now talking about price, let's talk about how much the USB hub costs and normal price. It's a hundred dollars US, but right now it's down to 70 with their Merry Christmas flash sale that they're doing, which is a pretty good price. I would say, again, this does a lot for you and a lot of hubs that do the same kind of thing are a lot more expensive. So I think it's a pretty good price. The one without the new updated cooling fan is the same price at regular but on sale they've actually dropped it even more down to 55 dollars us so if you don't really feel like you're going to be doing a lot of heavy usage on the nvme drive having the one without the built-in cooling fan should be totally fine but if you are going to be doing a lot of transferring with the nvme drive definitely get the one with the cooling fan and at regular price it just makes more sense to get the cooling fan one i don't know how much the normal one is outside of the flash sale they may just always have it discounted i don't know but this is a pretty good deal for the device and that's also a good thing to mention that they are doing their flash sale so they have a bunch of other products here that they are discounting we've talked about the dual bay nvme drive and it being down to 22 dollars on their website is fantastic i haven't used any of the other products so far but i am happy with the ones that i have covered and if you do want to check out any of the other ones that they do have here, getting them while they're on their flash sale is a great idea. With all that said, I am really glad that they sent this over. It has blown away almost all of my expectations. It's worked really, really well. The one thing I didn't like was the toolless design and the um, lack of better ports. But I think overall, those are pretty non-issues. It does a very good job. And as I mentioned, the toolless thing you're not gonna be replacing the NVMe drive too often in here, so I don't think it's gonna be a major issue. I'm really excited to replace my USB hub that I currently have in my laptop bag with this one, and that's mainly gonna get used with my work laptop. Now, if I get a personal laptop that has 
a better USB-C implementation. My current personal laptop does not. It's not really meant to be powered by USB-C and it doesn't do a lot of great stuff with that USB, singular USB-C port, by the way. Um, but if I ever do get a better laptop that'll uh, utilize that more, really excited to use this for that. Again, really excited to use it with my Steam Deck, um, excited to use it with my computer and to just see how many things that I can utilize this with. As always, I will leave links down in the description below where you can go ahead and pick this up. The first place to pick it up would be directly from their store. And as I've mentioned, they're doing their flash sale right now. So you can get this at a very good reduced price, which is pretty nice, as well as a bunch of their other products. I will also have a link to the Amazon store page, but unfortunately it is existing. The page exists, but they are not selling it through Amazon yet. If you want, you can go ahead and add that to your wish list and then pick it up at a later date if that's the way that you would prefer to buy it. If you do use the Amazon link, it will be an affiliate link, which helps support the channel. You're not obligated to use that, but I really do appreciate it. With all that said, I really do hope this video helped you out. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe, you can leave comments, questions, or feedback down in the comment section below, and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors, Thoughts, Time, and Step Back. And thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do want to see any of the other videos where I cover other awesome products like this, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. See you next time.